Hi, in this tutorial, we'll discuss the difference between a level and spectral compression, and we'll also have a deeper look at M spectral dynamics. When we talk of the compression at mixing or mastering stages, we usually mean a signal's dynamic range reduction. That is, loud parts of the signal become quieter and quiet parts become louder. The signal's frequency response remains more or less the same as it was before the compression was applied. Sure, an excessive compression can radically change audio, however in such cases it is rather an artistic effect than a traditional application we are discussing here. From another hand, spectral compression acts upon a signal's frequency response first of all. Its main purpose is to dynamically shape a spectral content. It will alter a dynamic range as well. However, it will be a result of impacting on individual harmonics rather than a total volume. The capability of changing harmonics individually gives you a great power over audio. Nevertheless, if taken carelessly, it can destroy all your hard work too. Let's have a look at some examples to get a better understanding of what we have discussed so far. To demonstrate the difference between two types of the compression, I will use the following chain of plugins. First in the chain is M Oscillator. Here I create some signals by clicking on the random button. The exact signal is irrelevant. It can be anything as long as it has harmonics. I shift the pitch down to see the spectrum in a better resolution. The second is M Multi Analyzer. It's a great tool for comparison of signals, and this is exactly what I'm going to use it for. This instance will examine the original signal. I set smoothness to 1. The third is M Dynamics. It's going to be my general purpose compressor. Next is Spectral Dynamics for spectral compression. Finally, one more instance of M Multi Analyzer. This plugin will show the effect compression has on the signal. The good thing about N Multi Analyzer is it allows me to analyze what's happening at different points of the chain at the same window and at the same time. The dark color represents the original signal and the red color is for the compressed one. Again, I set smoothness to one. I turn off M Spectral Dynamics for now as I start from the general compressor. Here I'm going to use compressor preset, set attack and release to 10 and 100 milliseconds correspondingly. Ratio to 4-1. The compressor is in action now, one can tell by looking at the reduction meter. Additionally, output level is considerably lower than input 1. Let's compare the original and compressed signal spectrums. For that, I open M Multi Analyzer. As you can see, there is no difference in frequency response between the original and processed signals because all signals harmonics were affected by the same reduction. To get even better comparison, I click on Normalize. It helps me to study a signal spectrum, regardless of its amplitude. You can see both spectrums coincide. The compressor did what it is supposed to do. It reduced the signal's level as the channel's volume fader would. Now let's see what will happen if the spectral compression is applied to the same signal. For that, I turn off M Dynamics and activate M Spectral Dynamics. Again, I select the preset called Compressor, Set Ratio to 4.1, raise threshold and start bringing threshold down. Let's open M Multi Analyzer and see what's going on now. As you can see, the frequency response is changing as I'm moving the threshold up and down. The fundamental and some harmonics have different levels compared to the ones they had in the original signal. As a result, the total level has changed as well, though not as much as it was in the case of the general compression. Thus, we can tell that the traditional compression treats the signal as a whole. It doesn't change the relationship within the signal spectrum. At the same time, the spectral compression does change its spectrum content. Both types reduce the dynamic range. Now that you know what spectral compression is about, we're going to have a closer look at M spectral dynamics. Let's open its edit window. Sections like General Parameters, Dynamic Detection, Gate, Processor 1 and 2 are the same as they are in M Dynamics and do the same job. For better understanding of each controller, please go to Compressors, Expanders, Gates tutorial. Here I will concentrate on Spectrum Panel. Let's start from the top. Quality. This controller defines FFT size. Low, medium and high settings correspond to 2048, 4096 and 8192 bins accordingly. The higher the setting you select, the more detail processing M Spectral Dynamics will execute. 
Let's have a look at how the plugin will represent the same signal at different settings. Low, medium, high. You can see when I select high, M Spectrodynamics shows the signal spectrum in the most accurate way. This is very important if you want to get the best results out of it. As always, with FFT, more bins mean more CPU consumption. That is why, if you're planning to work in the high frequency range only, you may get away with low settings. Resolution. This parameter is responsible for tracking down all changes an incoming signal has in time. It is this information that will be used later by the dynamic detection part to form an attack and release stages of the signal's envelope. The more precisely you want M Spectral Dynamics to do its work, the smaller the setting should be. Keep your eye on VST performance meter though. Low setting can make your CPU very hot. Smoothness. This slider does what it says. It smooths out frequency responses that M Spectral Dynamics builds. It may make a spectrum look easier to understand. However, this is not the purpose of it. The idea is to generalize dynamic changes across the spectrum. It's one of those controllers which is easier to show than to explain. Here's an example of music I'm going to use to demonstrate its effect. Now I'll bring the threshold down. The reduction graph shows us which part of the spectrum is currently lowered. It is very detailed as every spectral peak is processed individually. If I move the smoothest parameter to the right, M Spectral Dynamics will average the frequency response, and by doing so, it will build some general approximation of it. In this mode, the plugin doesn't work with every spectral peak anymore. Rather, it suppresses a frequency range whose total energy has reached the threshold. The higher the setting is, the more averaged the frequency response becomes. At very high settings, M Spectral Dynamics works like a multi-band compressor. Naturality. The actual algorithm behind this parameter is quite complex. As the name suggests, it tends to eliminate some artifacts, which can possibly arise during compression. All I can say is try it and trust your ears. If you feel it improves audio somehow, then use it. If you don't, it just set to zero. Slope. The purpose of this slider is to compensate low energy inherent in the high frequency range. I'm going to use pink noise to show what it does. Here is the pink noise's spectrum. It is known for having equal energy in each octave. We should expect to see a horizontal line then. And yet, FFT analysis shows that energy at low end is higher than at high end. The true reason for that is out of this tutorial scope. Let's just say this is a feature of FFT analysis. Now, if we apply spectral compression, we would be faced with constant suppression of low end only. To treat the whole range equally, we need to compensate high frequency energy loss. And this is exactly what the slope controller does. If I move it to the right, the right side of the spectrum will rise up, and at 3 decibels, it becomes horizontal. If I lower threshold now, all parts of the spectrum will be treated equally. There are no rules about which slope works the best for music. As a starting point, try 4 decibels. Use maximum frequency. If enabled, M Spectral Dynamics searches for the highest magnitude within the entire spectrum and uses it as a guide to work out the reduction degree. To some degree, this mode will remind you of classic level compression. Now, when you know the purpose of each controller, I would suggest you spend some time with each of them. Next time, I'll show you some practical examples with M Spectral Dynamics. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. See you next time.